Hi guys, I am coming to talk to you guys about something super important. I was um, in prayer and I've been pretty much praying about this um, specific thing that, you know, God showed me and, and talked to me about the other day and it's just been weighing on my heart and sometimes when God speaks to me and and puts something specific in my heart um, it could either be for myself um, or it could be for you know for everybody for me to share it with people and in this situation I always love sharing things that I know that um, help myself but also help others you know because that's really really what I I really really want to do is help others um and uh I I just felt like this was this is very important for this time you know um it's very important for any t any specific time but as you're watching this video you know I just really want to start off by praying right now so I just pray Lord that you would just use me Father God right now in this in this very moment as a willing vessel to just share your word, God. And that this would be from you, Father God, and, and and not just myself, Lord, that you would just remove me from the, you know, remove my voice, God, but that you would just use me, Lord, to share this message in the right way, Father God. That, that your words may be heard in this moment, Lord, that eyes would be open, and that ears would be open, and that as spirits and and souls out there would be would be livened and and saved and changed in Jesus name I just pray Lord and I give you all the glory and all the honor amen okay guys I really really want to share this I'm trying to be kind of quiet because Riley is actually she just fell asleep again oops and um uh, but the other day I was praying and God just spoke isolation. He just said isolation. And I got confirmation also because one of my sisters in Christ, she actually posted this short video. She does these um, short clips in the morning and she just gives a, a, a small word from God that, um, not a small, but it's like a short video of a word of that she gets in the morning from God. And she shares it and she was talking about something so super similar and I was like, wow, that's just confirmation, and I want to share this. So, the word that we're going to be talking about today is isolation. And just so you guys can get it. I hope I didn't spell that incorrectly, but this is what we're going to be talking about. Isolation and, and anything that this pertains to that I have learned and that I know of for this moment. And my specific um, personal um, experience with it. So I want to give uh, awareness for everybody out there that is uh, going through this similar situation right now. I am not, and I'm just grateful to God that I am not in this in this season, but I have experienced isolation before, and I have isolated myself from other people when I was going through situations, um, mainly because of maybe shame, uh, fear, or, you know, just pretty much a shame. You know, like when you're going through something and you kind of just don't really want to share it with anybody, you don't know who to trust, who to come to, and we always have God. Always, no matter what, don't ever forget that you always have the Lord to talk to. I know things may get overwhelming sometimes in this season. People are hiding and, and keeping themselves from other people because they're hurting. You know, there's a lot of fear going around. And this is what I really, really want to pray about. Because these strongholds, these um, these bad spirits and, and things that are not of God are going to be broken in the name of Jesus. They are. We're going to, we're going to expose it right now and today in this video. Isolation awareness. This is what I want to talk about. Never think that it's okay to isolate yourself, especially as a believer. You know, this is for a believer. This is for an, uh, this will be very helpful also for a non-believer. If you are a believer in, in Christ, you should not be isolating yourself from other believers. This is not good for you. 
um, you know, how are you going to be able to, you know, help out or contribute to advancing God's kingdom if you are separating yourself from others? It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter your situation. It doesn't matter if you have limitations. God is always there for us. He's always going to open open a door. He's going to always provide a way for us to be out there and to fellowship with our brothers and sisters. You know, um, there is always a way. Put others before yourself. When you're in this situation, don't just look at your problem. Don't look at your situation because I've done that in the past. I've looked at my problem. I've looked at my situation and I'm like, nobody understands. You know, uh, I can't talk to nobody because they're not going to understand this situation or whatever the case may be. Put your problem to the side and look to others before yourself because what you're doing is you're actually being selfish you know when you're isolating yourself and you're thinking oh, I'm just gonna stay away from everybody because you know there's so much negativity and this and that yeah there is there's a lot of negativity but you have to know who you can be around with and it's a fellow brother and sister believers in Christ that are you know you'll be able to discern whether there is a mature person in Christ or not and those that you can be around with and you need to get yourself out of that you know hermit this is this is like the spirit of the hermit you need to get out of that that that's it's gonna cause laziness selfishness uh, depression spiritual attacks um, anger jealousy just all kinds of thoughts are gonna start you're gonna have too much time to be thinking about things that are not of God you know, the enemy will come in that time because he sees you by yourself and you're isolating yourself. So God did not make us to be alone. You know, God uh, gave us each other to fellowship to, you know, we are part of the body of Christ. You know, the body of Christ has the hand, has the feet, has the, you know, that's just a, a natural point of view to view it. Your body, you have your hands, your feet, your eyes, your nose, your ears, your mouth. You know, the body has several parts. So we, as the body of Christ, are to have fellowship with one another, you know? And the enemy, like I said, would rather come after you while you're by yourself, you're alone, especially you're a believer, you're there alone. And of course, he's going to say, you know what? I got this one by theirself. They're they're weak right now. They don't even want to seek help. They don't want to seek fellowship or, or anything with their brothers and sisters. I can, I'm, I got them. They're weak. So, you know... Bring, I'm bringing that into light for you so you could see that is not for you. Get out of that depression. Get out of that, I don't want to be around anybody right now. I don't want nobody to talk to me right now. Get out of that ugliness because that is not for you. That is not of the Lord. That is not good for you. Even as a non-believer, that is not where you need to be. Being by yourself is wrong. It's, it's bad for you. You know, that's why we have so many brothers and sisters or people out there just in general wanting to have these suicidal thoughts. And I just I just ask God right now to cast that out of your life right now because you are worth living. You are worth dying for. Jesus died for you. God has already equipped us with gifts. OK, we all have gifts. It doesn't matter if you think you don't know how to do. You're not a baker. Or you're not this or not that. God has gifted everybody. Everybody. So your gift is to be used for good and not to be just there. You know, you're not supposed to waste it away. So get connected to the body of Christ. Get connected with your brothers and sisters. Call your friends. Even though you don't want to in this moment right now, you just don't feel like you want to even get out of bed, do it. Push yourself. God is there. He's going to give you the strength to get up and do something. Even if it's just to get up and pray and listen to some worship music, get clean around, um, do something, speak to your, um, reach out to a brother and sister, say, Hey, what are you doing today? You know, uh, get connected. And if you're not in a church or you don't have a, a, a home church that you're, you're in right now, find a church, find somewhere you can get connected so you can start having regular fellowship with, with your brothers and sisters in Christ. We all need to stick together, help each other. Remember in my last video, I was talking about unity and that unity is the key to a divided nation. Unity is the key to a divided people, period, you know, to a divided anything, unity. We got to stick together, get out there and get in a church. If you're a believer and you are not in a church by now, you need to have that fellowship with your brothers and sisters. You will hinder your growth. You will not be able to grow. 
How are you going to grow? How are you going to get out there and speak to the people? You need brothers and sisters with you. You cannot be by yourself. There is no lone rangers in the body of Christ. Okay? Even Jesus had his 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 crew. He had the, the disciples. You know, you guys got to be with, we got to be with each other. I'm speaking to myself too, guys. Okay, also, let's see what, I, I wrote some notes because I, I wanted us to be able to talk at this topic because I feel this is, I believe this is so super important. The body of Christ does not function alone, okay? It functions together. We function together. doesn't matter if you have um, people that you don't agree with or you don't agree with the way that they live and they are a believer. Look, guys, everybody is at, the, at a different level in Christ. Some people are very new to Christ. And when I say very new, it's they just been accepted. I mean, they have just gave their life to Christ. You know, they don't know. Maybe people don't even read the Bible yet. You know, give people a chance, pray for them, help them. That's why we can be together so we can talk to each other and say, Hey Matt, I read this scripture and this is what it showed me. You know, share that, share God's love and God's power and God's testimony in your life with others, with our brothers and sisters. That's how we grow. If you're staying in your house all day and yeah, you're reading the Bible and you're praying because there is a time for everything and there's also a time to be alone with God and pray I understand that I'm not saying no you cannot be alone ever but there is a time and a place for that you know there's there's always a time and a place and um, let me go ahead and share some of these scriptures with you because I have several scriptures written down so that you guys can go and open that Bible. Just go in there, open that Bible. That's what I really, truly encourage you also to do is every morning, every morning if possible, or every night, every at least open that Bible and, and read something every day. I encourage you. So I'm going to go ahead and share these scriptures with you. You can write them down. I'll go through a few because I know I don't have that much time. But I'm going to go through a few of them with you, okay? Go ahead and pause this real quick. Get your Bible so you guys can um, check it out with me. Get your Bibles. Get something to write with, a, an old notebook or something, a piece of paper, a pen, whatever. So you can write these down because these are going to truly bless your life. This is going to bless you. I know it is. <laughs> Sorry, in the background, you can probably hear the, the trash man. Um, okay, so the first scripture I'm going to go over is Proverbs 18.1. And um, I'm sharing this, guys, with with you guys because this is so awesome i i mean i learn whatever i learn that you know whatever god shows me whatever re revelation i get i will gladly share with you guys i don't have all the answers remember only the lord does but i can share with you whatever he teaches me so um proverbs 18 1 we're going to pretty much talk about selfishness because i just want to show you that yes when you isolate yourself it is a selfish thing so, through desire, a man having separated, right here, separated himself, seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. So, this person is seeking his own selfish desires because he is by himself. So, when you're by yourself, you're just, you're separating yourself and you're seeking things that are not of the Lord. Okay? So we're going to go over another scripture with you guys. This right here is going to show you that we are not to be alone. It's not good. So Genesis, we're breaking it down, going back to the basics. Genesis 2, 18. We're going to Genesis, okay? This is in the beginning, guys. And the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. Okay, so God does not want us to be alone. If he intended for us to be alone, then it would have just been Adam. That's it. Bye, everybody else. Okay, so we are not to be alone. Okay, I'm going to share another one with you guys. And that was, again, Genesis 2, 18. So you guys can go back and read for yourself, okay? Okay, right here, I'm going to be talking about, obviously, two are better than one. So when you're alone, you're... Yes, you are strong. God gives us strength, but it's better when there is other people around you, when you're having fellowship, when you're with your brothers and sisters. So right here in Ecclesiastes 4, 9 
through 10. We're going to go over that. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. And we're going to go to 10. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth. For he hath not another to help him up. So if you fall, your brothers and sisters will be there to help you, to lift you, to encourage you, to, to say, hey, man, I fell before too. It's okay. God is going to help you. You know, we got to lift each other up, encourage each other. Call your brothers and sisters right now. Those of you know, they're going through something, you know, like I said, suicidal awareness. Come on, let's, let's, let's bring that to the light. Let's expose that darkness and bring it to the light so that it can be removed and those situations can be taken care of. Let's pray about those things for our brothers and sisters. If you know somebody's going through something, our pastor just, we were talking about this the other day. And, and you know, there's people that have committed suicide. And then a lot of people come forth and they're like, man, I knew they were going through some stuff and stuff like that. It's like, if you know these things, or you kind of have that hint in you, that, that feeling, you know, that's God letting you know, hey, reach out. You know, a hello, a smile, a hey, how are you doing? How have you been? A, conversa a simple conversation can change and save somebody's life today. Just let people know, hey, I'm here for you. You know, whatever I can do, uh, if, if you need to talk, need someone to talk, you know, sacrifice that time for somebody else. Put others before yourselves. Okay, I'm going to share another scripture. Okay, I'm going to just continue because this is still good. Okay, so I'm still at Ecclesiastes uh, 4. I'm going to 11 to 12. Again, if if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? Isn't that awesome? Like you can just imagine in your mind, like, you know, when people go to the mountains and they're like freezing. Well, when they have another person, at least it's a little bit easier to kind of warm each other up. You know, that's just what I have in my head, like the picture that's going on when I'm reading this. And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. So if you're alone, the enemy, okay, the enemy's coming against you, right? He will prevail against you. He will, he will, it's easier for him to mess you up, okay? And when two are together, that's like me and my husband, we're battle buddies. When we're together, we pray for each other and we help to get strength in each other and we just you know we we pray for god to be with each other we encourage each other lift each other up when one's not in a good mood or whatever the case may be we encourage and we pray and we help each other back up you know until we're like okay you got this you got this so this is what we need our brothers and sisters for and this is a beautiful uh way to describe also, a three-fold cord is not quickly broken. Like a string, you can get a piece of string and you, you could easily tear that with your hands, right? But if you got a, a three-fold cord and you try to tear that easily, it's not going to tear easily, okay? That's like with us. One of us, okay, yeah, we're kind of weak, just one of us doing something. But when there's so many of us together trying to do the same thing, more work gets done, more things get done, more... Um, the more of us praying together, you know, it gets done. It, I mean, I don't want to confuse y'all, but I hope you're getting what I'm is trying to say here. Okay. So I'm going to share some more with you guys. Okay. Here, we're going to be talking about fellowship. So I'm going to go, we're going to Hebrews, um, 10, 24 and 25. So Hebrews chapter 10 verses 24 and 25. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. So let us come together. Don't, don't forget to come together in fellowship. Okay, guys, do not forget to come together in fellowship unto love and to good works. Let's have fun together. Let's do good things together. Let's reach out to people together, you know? Okay, I'm trying to go kind of fast because my time's almost running out, but I really, really want to share these scriptures with you because I don't want to give you guys any advice without putting some truth in there, you know? Not some, but it, this has to be backed up by scripture because if not, then I'm, do, I'm at the wrong, okay? 
and this really really i really want you guys to get this because this has blessed me so much from in the beginning where i just didn't want to be around people when i first got saved i just before i always kept everything to myself i always was just like lone ranger independent like i don't need nobody i don't care if i don't have anybody and now it's like that but it's like i have god like i know i have god and also my brothers and sisters yes i love them I love them and I love being around them now. <laughs> Before, I didn't like being around people when I was going through stuff. I just wanted to be by myself. Just let me try to get this together. But now it's like, no, that's selfish. You know, I'd rather just have people around to help me, to encourage me so that I could get out of that mess. Okay, so let's continue on. Okay, now we're going to Philippians 2, 3 to 4. So let's see what it says. Because this is going to be talking about, you know, putting others before yourself. So let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. That's, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. So put others before yourself. Don't be selfish. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on things of others. So look to see that other people are, you know, they're needing to, you know, don't just look for to be selfish and, and doing things for yourself. But look to others. Let's help each other. Okay, so let's move on. Okay, we're still in the same, um, like, you know, seeking others before ourselves. So, um, not seeking others, but thinking of others. So in Romans 15, uh, verse, Romans chapter 15, verse 1. We then are... We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. So let's bear with other with others in their burdens, okay? When they're going through things, let us be with them in those times, in those rough times. Even those that are mourning right now, those that have, have been going through a loss, you know, people's lives have been taken. There's so many things going on right now, and there's so many people mourning. Let us be with them. Even if, you know, they don't want us to talk or anything, you just want to, they just want us to be quiet, but to be there, just to be there in their presence, that's really, guys, that is so important. To be there with your brothers and sisters during times of struggle, during times of, of loss, during times of tribulations. This is what we should come together for. This is this is something that is so important, you know. And um, let's bear with each other's burdens. There's a lot of things going on, guys. Let's reach out to each other. Let's stay connected. I'm going to go ahead and share a few more scriptures, okay? Because I have just a little bit more time. Okay, Galatians 6. Galatians chapter 6, verse 2. Bear ye one another's burdens. There we go. And so fulfill the law of Christ. That is in the law of Christ. To bear ye one another's burdens. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'm just so grateful, guys, that, that I have brothers and sisters. And before, I didn't think anybody was with me. Like, I was just always like, I don't have no friends, this and that. But it's like it takes us to get out there, step out in faith and to reach out you know not everybody's gonna come crawling to you not everybody's gonna come and hey let me be your best friend you gotta put in the work too let's get out there open up your bible turn on your your phone message your brothers and sisters say hey let's go have breakfast hey let's go have lunch together hey let's talk let's you know come over uh you know and it doesn't matter if your house is dirty it doesn't matter guys just love one another. Hey, that'll give y'all something to do together. Two is more than just one cleaning. You'll get the cleaning done faster. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go ahead and share some more. It doesn't matter if I run out of time. I just really want to share this, guys. Okay? Just a moment. Okay, Hebrews 13, 1 and 2. Let brotherly love continue. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers. For thereby some have entertained angels unaware. Man, come on. There's people that need love out there. Say hi. You see people walking out there in the streets. Some some people that are not, um, I don't like to say homeless, you know, because uh, it's not that they're homeless. There's a lot of them that, you know, they're, they're without more than just a home, you know, and don't forget to entertain them, you know, say hi, say God loves you, you know, say, I'm going to, I'm going to pray for you and pray for them, you know, 
Talk to your brothers and sisters. They are also our brothers and sisters in Christ. Let us love one another. There's so many things, so many people out there that, that don't even get a hello sometimes every day. Some people that are just constantly with a frown on their face. Smile. A smile can save somebody's life. Smile. Say hi. Good morning. Hey, how are you doing? How's your How's your day? Or I hope you have a nice day. I hope you have a great day. Anything is better than nothing. Anything great and anything good is better than nothing at all. You can save a life, guys. Okay, I don't have that much time. So I'm going to go ahead and um, give you some more scriptures. You can write them down. I'll put them in the description box below. Um, and make sure you go go through them. Read them. Because I really, really want you guys to get that, you know, soaked in. Because I think this, I believe this is a very important. So um, these scriptures that I'm going to give you right now are going to show you that isolation will open up spiritual attacks. It'll lead to sin, depression, selfishness, anger, etc. Jealousy, uh, all these things that we shouldn't be having in our minds. Um, so in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, uh, in Genesis chapter 4, verse 7, in Romans chapter 7, verse 21, if I'm saying this too fast, just pause, rewind, or look in the description bar when I put them in there. In Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 14, and then also when I was talking about, you know, we're the body of Christ and, and that we should not be functioning. We can't function by ourselves. It, you know, we function together in unity. So in Romans chapter 12, verse 5, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 14, and also in, in still in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, uh, verses 20 through 21. And then how I was also saying, um, you know, there is always a time and a place, you know, where you can be alone with God and pray. Because uh, even Jesus went alone. He went into the mountains to go pray alone. And, you know, it, it's just showing us, yes, it's okay to be alone with God and pray with him and have our time with him. But do not overindulge in that isolation. Do not indulge in isolation. It's not good for you. It doesn't matter if you don't, you're not a people person. If you're not a people person, you don't have love and you don't got God. Because God is love. And in order for us to have love and know God, we have to love the people. You cannot sit and say, I'm not a people person. Because then you are not a person that loves God either. You know, we got to love the people. We got to love ourselves. Love the people. Love the Lord. If we love the Lord, we love the people. So in that with uh, being alone, you know, and being able to be have that time with God. In Matthew chapter 14, verse 23. And then there's a Luke chapter 5, verse 16. And then there's Mark chapter 1, verse 35. Guys, God bless you so much. You know, God bless you. God help you and God remove all those strongholds, those walls, those things that are not of him. You know, the, the fear, the anger, the depression, the selfishness, the pride, the shame, whatever it is that you're going through, God is going to remove those things and he's going to give you love and joy and peace in the name of Jesus. He's going to strengthen you today and he's going to get you out of that isolation. So step out, put, bring that darkness out of your house, get up, clean up, pray, get your worship on, listen to some music, reach out to your friends and family and encourage one another. God bless you. I love you so much. Bye.